it's one of my primary social outlets because when I'm thinking of a place to go, especially when I'm going with my wife, one of the first places I think of is the Sterling Club. Well, the club started back in the early 20th century when separate but equal was the societal norm. Blacks were refused membership in many organizations, banned from patronizing many bars, restaurants, and hotels. The club sprang from the continued denial of blacks to play on sports teams, enter places like the YMCA, the YWCA, and other recreation centers. But a lot of these men were professional men, in fact. They were some doctors, there were some lawyers, uh, businessmen. So they started their own club because they wanted to be able to, to participate in activities just like everybody else. There were a number of social clubs. The Sterling Club was one of the only clubs that had its own building. In 1926, club members raised enough money to build a clubhouse at Dale Street in Rondo. Member Clarence Cap Wigginton, the first black municipal architect in the country, designed the building to look like a house with front and back porches, full kitchen and bathroom. According to past members, the club historian Abe Weaver, residents feared the club would become a hangout for carousing. Instead, it was used to host monthly meetings, annual dinners, candidate forums, and other civic functions. And they stayed in that house until the St. Paul Housing and Redevelopment Authorities came by and did some, some things in the area. And they purchased the house from them. Ultimately, we ended up being in the place we are today. So I guess one thing is you've got to ask yourself, how do members continue to go on for, for 100 years? Because this is our 100th year. And there aren't any members who are around now who were around in, in the 100 years ago. But existing members can recommend new members based on their contacts with them out in the community. And invite them to become a member of the Sterling Club. That way it's been able to sustain itself and can keep the, the membership current and active over a period of years. Yeah, the number of membership uh, in the Sterling Club has remained constant over the last 15 years at about 35 members. Uh, we have a certain amount of life members. Those are members who have served 25 years faithfully and, and um, have transitioned to a life membership status. Even though the clubhouse is located in St. Paul, and at one time it was primarily men from St. Paul, currently the members are from all over the Twin City area. It's a well-run club. We have a lot of members from the community, people who are in business for themselves. When I started the club, I was working 60 hours a week with my, you know, I feel like once I join something, I want to do the best I can to help that, that organization exist. It allows us to be engaged in, uh, in the community and um, give back a little bit. The place is beautiful and it's a real nice place to go and shoot some pool, have a drink, watch the game. So it's been a real good, enrichment to my life. And it's, it's still uh, throughout the Twin City community. The people who know about it is, see it as a very respectable club. And in all the years I've been a member, since, and that's since 1978, I can't recall seeing two members ever become irritated with one another to, to the point of, of having a real heated argument. And I think that's remarkable when you get this many people together uh, in, 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 in situations like this. We have a 100 year anniversary coming up on September 14th. 
down at the e Profile Event Center down by the U of M Minnesota. Uh, they will, we will celebrate our 100 year anniversary with guests, Freddie Bell and others.